My name is Christina Kalb, and I'm a scientist working on the MET Plus team at NCAR. This video will cover how to run the brightness temperature distance map use case. Specific information about this use case can be found in the MET Plus user's guide. Go to section 5, MET Plus use cases, model applications, convection allowing models, and click on grid stat brightness temperature distance maps. Looking at the information, we see that this use case runs grid stat to create distance maps on the FV3 model ensemble, ensemble members compared to GOES brightness temperature data. It is set up to run two ensemble members, one model initialization time, and two forecast lead times. The MET Plus and MET configuration files are shown here in the documentation. If you want to learn more about grid stat and distance maps, go to the MET user's guide under section 10, which is on the grid stat tool. This video assumes that you have already installed MET and set up your environment for MET Plus. Information on how to do this can be found in section one and the installation and setup sections of the online tutorial topics. Here we will be using the recommended setup, which is first passing in a use case specific configuration file, followed by a second configuration file with settings that are specific to the system we are using. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parameter file and the settings for this use case. We'll first go into the MET Plus repository. Tutorialsystem.conf is the system specific configuration file. The use case specific configuration file is located under PARM, use cases, model applications, convection allowing models, and it's called grid stat forecast FV3 OBS goes brightness temp dmap.conf. So we'll go ahead and open this file. If we first look at the process list inside this file, we will see that there are two instances of grid stat. These two instances are for the two ensemble members, and the values in parentheses are identifiers for the members. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the file and we look at grid stat output prefix and forecast grid stat input template, we see the word instance in curly brackets in both of these variables. This value is set to the ensemble member in parentheses in the process list when MET plus is run, and it's how it points to the different members. Next, let's check our paths to the input data. To do this, we'll need to know the value of input base as it's given in forecast grid stat input dir and obs grid stat input dir. So we'll go to another terminal and pull up tutorialsystem.conf. Input base is set to the following path that's listed here. So we can combine that with the rest of the forecast grid stat input dir to check for files. Here we see that there are two date directories and a polygon for verification. If we go back and then look at forecast grid stat input template, we see that the model date is given as year, month, day, and hour, which is the first template seen here. Inside this directory, we will see that there are four ensemble members, but only two will be run for the use case. So let's check the first ensemble member and see if we've got files. Here we see that there are two files, one for the one hour forecast lead time and another for the two hour forecast lead time, which is as we would expect. So next, we'll go ahead and check the observed input files. OBS grid stat input dir is the same as forecast grid stat input dir. So we'll copy paste. However, in this case, the observed input template is given as year underscore month underscore day underscore 141. So that's the second directory listed here. 
Inside this directory, we see that there are two goes files, one for the one UTC valid time and another for the two UTC valid time. Next, let's check our input variables to be sure that we have them correctly specified in the configuration file. First, looking at the model data, we will open a model file. The variable that we have specified in our configuration file is called SBTA1613 top of atmosphere. And the level is set to two asterisks inside parentheses, which indicates the variable is in two dimensions. If we scroll through our input file, we see that variable name SBTA1613 is listed here and it's in two dimensions. So our model variable is specified correctly. Next, we'll check the observed variable. If I scroll up so that I can get the directory as we listed previously, Looking at the configuration file, the observed variable is called channel 13 brightness temperature, and it's also in two dimensions. Scrolling down through the file, here we see channel 13 brightness temperature, and it's in two dimensions in our OBS input input file. Additionally, in this case, we're using a threshold of 235 Kelvin to create the distance maps. And finally, to get distance map output from GridStat, we have to set the GridStat output flag DMAP in our configuration file. It can be set to either stat or both. Here we have it set to both, which will produce two output files, a .stat file and a .txt file. So now we're ready to start the use case. We start by calling the script run metplus.py, which is in the USH directory, followed by a minus C and then our use case specific configuration file, followed by a minus C, and then our tutorial or system configuration file. So here the use case is running. It will go through four calls to GridStat, one for each of the two forecast lead times and ensemble members. And the MetPlus run has now finished successfully. So let's take a look out the output to be sure that we have what is expected. We'll first go back to the use case documentation. Scrolling down to the expected output, we can see that the expected output is 12 files. The first six are for the core LSM1 ensemble member, and the second six are for the core MP1 member. Each member contains two valid times, 01 UTC, and 02 UTC valid on May 21st, 2019. There are three files for each ensemble member and valid time. The files ending in dmap.txt and .stat contain the distance map output line. We have two files here because we set the dmap flag to both. The file with pairs.nc at the end contains gridded output, including the distance maps. So if we go back to our MetPlus run, we can first take a look at the output, the log output to find our output directory. And when you scroll down, the output directory is listed here after the minus outdoor flag in our grid stack call. Looking inside this directory, we see that we have all 12 expected files. Finally, we can make a distance map image by using the plot data plane tool in MET. So first, we need to take a look at the pairs.nc file so that we can get the name of the variable we want to plot for our distance map. The obs distance map variable is specified here and it's in two dimensions. So exiting out of this file, we can now call plot data plane using plot data plane. And then we specify the input file name. 
And then secondly, the name of the output postscript file we want, which I'm going to call distance map ps. And then the variable we want to plot is specified using the following string by calling name equals and our variable name in quotes, followed by a semicolon and then level equals. And in this case, two asterisks in parentheses in quotes. And so plot data plane has finished successfully. The output image looks as follows. If we compare this to the distance map image in the use case documentation, we'll see that they match. So our MET plus run has completed successfully. This concludes the tutorial on the brightness temperature distance map use case. Thank you for watching.